Hello and welcome to The Print. I'm Akshya Nath, Senior Assistant Editor. And today on this episode of State Draft, I bring you my story, Ex-Professor Udayar Leader with Short Fuse, who was K. Ponmudi, DMK Minister on Opposition Rada. The Dravita Munnetra Karagam, DMK-led Tamil Nadu governments, run-ins with State Governor R. N. Ravi are well-known. One of the players in many of these conflicts is the state's higher education minister, Dr. K. Ponmudi. A former academician and a popular leader widely perceived to have a short fuse, Ponmudi keeps the Udayar community largely faithful to the DMK in Vilupuram and the neighbouring districts. Ponmudi is the latest DMK minister on the radar of the opposition Bharatiya Janata Party, All India Anna Dravida Munnetra Karagam, BJP AIA DMK Alliance after the Madras High Court refused to stay the corruption case against him for allegedly aiding his son Gautam Sigamani and close aides in illegal quarrying of red sand in Vilupuram. The case is with regard to the period between 13 February 2007 and 15 May 2007 when Ponmudi was the Minister of Mines and Minerals in the then DMK government regime. Gautam, also an MP from Kalakurchi, had sought the dismissal of the case, which is now pending in the MP MLA Special Court, Willapuram, under the Prevention of Corruption Act. Soon after the court dismissed Gautam's petition, the Tamil Nadu State BJP President K. Anamalai took to social media and said, DMK Minister Ponmudi has willfully caused a loss to the exchequer to the tune of Rs 28.4 crores by illegally mining and exploiting his position as minister. Will MK Stalin sack his minister Ponmudi as it's becoming increasingly clear that he willfully caused the loss of to 28.4 crores to the exchequers in Tamil Nadu? Or will MK Stalin shield Ponmudi just like how he did for Sendhil Balaji? AIDMK Rajya Sabha MP CV Shanmugam, who defeated Ponmudi in the 2011 elections, told the print there is documentary evidence against Ponmudi and it's a clear case. As a minister, Ponmudi has favoured his son and his son was living under his roof. He has misused his office. The print reached Ponmudi via calls, but minister refused to comment. Meanwhile, political analysts in the state have dismissed the case as an old one. Sumansi Raman, a political analyst, told the print, there are no new charges made and these charges won't have any impact unless there is a conviction. Ponmudi has also made headlines often for locking horns with Governor Ravi. Ponmudi Wednesday refused to attend the convocation ceremony of Periyar University in Salem. According to media reports, on 8 June, the minister had alleged that the governor was causing delays in handing over degree certificates to over 9 lakh students since the latter wanted union ministers to be invited as guests and citing their unavailability as a reason for the delay in giving his consent. Ponmudi had earlier also reportedly said that students were unable to apply for admissions to foreign educational institutions due to the delay in the convocations of their respective universities. On 15 June, while Tamil Nadu Chief Minister N.K. Stalin and Ravi fought over the continuation of arrested Minister Sendhil Balaji in the cabinet, Ponmudi reportedly alleged that the governor was acting against the constitution and state autonomy by interfering in the administration. A year ago in July, Ponmudi scheduled to attend a convocation on event at the Madurai Kanmarajar University had boycotted that even too, alleging that the governor was playing politics by inviting BJP minister L. Murugan as a guest of honour without consulting Ponmudi. The 72-year-old DMK loyalist Ponmudi has ensured that the northeast district of Vilupuram in Tamil Nadu, the largest in the state, according to the district's administration website, remains under the party's control. Punmudi's political journey in Vilupuram has also seen its fair share of caste-based politics. Vilupuram has a dominant one-year population that shifted from the DMK to the Patali Makalkachi, a party which is focused on the one-year caste. In the one-year dominated district of Vilupuram, Ponmudi of the influential land-possessing Odeyar community garnered enough support to win from the constituency on four consecutive times, said political analyst Priyan Srinivasan to the print. 
According to a report published by the Hindu, 38% of members of the ODR community voted for the DMK, while 32% voted for the AIA DMK, and the remaining 30% voted for others in the 2021 polls. The district has seven assembly constituencies and in the 2021 polls, four of these were won by the DMK, including Willupuram. In the last two elections, Ponmudi has shifted his constituency from Willupuram to his home constituency of Tirukoelur, another constituency in the Willupuram district, which has a high Odeyar population. Speaking on condition of anonymity, a DMK district member from the district said, Ponmudi over the years had sidelined several one-year leaders like MLA K. P. Palaniyappan, Tindivanam G. Venkatraman and that has caused a lot of displeasure within the community. The DMK source added that after Ponmudi became the face of the district in front of the party high command and became the district secretary, he cast aside those he perceived as competition and gave his loyalists more opportunities. A six-time MLA, Ponmudi was a professor of politics before entering electoral politics. With a PhD and triple masters, Ponmudi is among the most academically qualified people in the Tamil Nadu state cabinet at present. He is remembered fondly by his former colleagues as a passionate academician and has dedicated student following. Whenever the minister goes out, he makes it a point to stop his vehicle and speak to school or college students if he sees any. He asks them about their studies and the curriculum, said Balavanur Anbarasar, DMK Villapuram IT Wing Secretary, who has known Podmudi for the last 15 years. Retired Professor Kalyani Alias Piraba Kalvimani, who worked alongside Punmudi in Villupuram's government college, said Punmudi was a very well-read person and used to be liked by the students in the campus. He was one of those teachers who wanted to impart knowledge to his students and didn't just see it as a money-making endeavor, said the professor. Personally too, Ponmudi and his family were very warm and engaging, said Kalyani. A physics professor, Kalyani, also gave Ponmudi's son, Gautam, tuition classes when he was in class 10. Ponmudi's political journey began in 1989 when he was first given a ticket from Villupuram. He received great support from the district at that time, said analyst Priyan Srinivasan. A Tamil author and Villupuram native, Jyoti Narasimhan, who as a young man worked on DMK campaigns and was among those who went canvassing for Ponmudi in 1989, told the print, in those days the contestants would go around the constituency in open jeeps and greet the voters. Whenever we went, there used to be a huge reception for Ponmudi. There were 500 to 600 students who led the campaign for the professor. People in the district also saw him as an educated man capable of doing good. In his political campaigns too, Ponmudi spoke about the importance of education. The first thing he would ask people would be if they are sending their children to school or college. If he met children, then the conversation would be about their studies, said Jyoti. The 1989 election results had barely been announced when Ponmudi received the news that he had been appointed the Minister of Health in the DMK government. However, the DMK government was short-lived and dismissed by the PM on charges of alleged anti-national activities under Article 356. In the following 1991 state assembly elections, the DMK won in just two seats and the election was swept by the AIA DMK led by J. Jailalitha. In 1996, Punmudi won back his seat from Villupuram and was made minister but this time of transport and highways. In the 2006 elections, when DMK returned to power, he became the Minister of Higher Education, a profile that he was given again in 2021. In Villapuram, the constituency from where Ponmudi contested maximum number of times, his supporters attribute the development in the district to Ponmudi. In Villapuram, we have a pre- and post-Ponmudi period. Ponmudi, after becoming the minister, brought in development projects to the district, said N. Barasir. Countering this claim, AIDMK Shanmugam said, everyone in power has done something or the other for the district. It cannot be an excuse for looting, that is corruption. Apart from being a capable academician and administrator, Podmudi is also known for another character trait, his short temper. 
However, according to Anbarasu, he also cools down within minutes. He's a very straightforward person and even if he scolds someone within minutes, he talks to them normally like nothing happened. He takes care of this team, said Anbarasu. However, in the past year, he's made headlines often for his comments. In May 2022, while speaking at an event, he had questioned the rationale behind the argument that learning Hindi could open more employment opportunities. Many said you will get jobs if you learn Hindi. Is it so? Look here in Coimbatore, who is selling Pani Puri? It is them, the Hindi speakers. He commented on the Hindi speaking community. And this had caused an outcry against him. In response to Ponmudi's comments, Governor R. N. Ravi had said, an impression is created by some people that the central government is imposing a language on Tamil Nadu or anywhere. I think that's far from the truth. In another incident in October last year, the DMK minister was criticized for referring to the DMK's free bus travel scheme for women as OC bus, OC being a slang for free. The opposition had criticized the minister and the DMK's attitude towards welfare schemes. This is in the DMK's genes, alleged Shanmugam while talking to uh, the print. Not just Ponmudi, many others also speak the same language and tone, added Shanmugam. Meanwhile, Anbarasu, who handles Ponmudi's social media pages, as well said the video of the minister talking about OC bus was taken out of context. He was using colloquial language, but the opposition took his speech out of context. The minister has now become more aware of the issues one can face via social media and is more conscious and is also trying to learn and understand how social media works, Anbarasi added. At a time when one of the ministers in the DMK cabinet, Sendal Balaji, is facing corruption charges and is being investigated by the ED, the DMK and its party leadership is being watched carefully. Speaking about the opposition's effort to bring down the ruling party, Priyan said, DMK needs to be cornered. It is what the opposition wants and they want the DMK support to be reduced. And that's exactly what is happening now. That's all I have for you on this episode of Stay Draft. Please do tune in to The Print for more such stories. I'm Akshana Nath, Senior Assistant Editor with The Print.